Welcome to episode 4 of Celtic Sagas and Law. I'm your host, Martin Vaughan Watkin. Uh, in this episode, I was going to do the story of the Lady of Chinnaman Vaur, but uh, as you see in the YouTube channel, I found uh, somebody that did it a lot better than me and who's actually at the spot as well. But as I said on um, Facebook, that um, he did miss out a fair bit. Now, Chinnaman Vaur is located in um, an area known as Cum Apobal Hain, which loosely translates as Valley of the Ancients. Now, it's a very magical spot, and to some of us, sort of a certain persuasion, a very powerful place as well. It's located about 20 miles north of, I'm uh, um, probably more 20, like 25 north from the city of Swansea in South Wales. Now, Swansea in Welsh is Aber Tawe. Now, Aber means mouth of, and Tawe is, Tawe is the name of the river. Now, the valley is where the river Tawe is. Uh, is is um, starts and the area is surrounded by small streams and waterfalls uh, absolutely stunning the area also um, as you come towards it from Swansea following the river on the main road you can actually see the sleeping giant mountain of Cribeth from uh, episode 2 I think he, uh, that story's in and um, it's a beautiful spot you have Carrig de One, which is a stone circle uh, and a standing stone and its own sentinel stone standing on a plateau in the middle of the valley. There's also a um, what looks like a natural outcrop of stone. It looks like a thing of the people that build Stonehenge, uh, build a diving board. It looks that into a pool of water. And there's a circle that's um, been carved into the rock itself. It's obviously held some sort of pole of something of some description. And what I've read from ancient records, there was also a stone avenue going up to um, Carrick Duan itself. And obviously, uh, over time, that's obviously the peat has grown over it. Also, the second part of the story um, is after the lady returned to the Chinnaban Vaur, uh, uh, her and her husband had actually had three sons, uh, which became known as the Morgan Brothers. And they... Um, Year and a day after she returned, she uh, the brothers went up to the Stone of Ascension, which uh, I'll post a picture on the Facebook page, but it's a sort of, if you think of a stone split in half, that's, the, that's where they stood. She stood at the edge of the water because she couldn't re-enter the earth plane anymore. And she passed on to them the wisdom of the Fae. Now, that sounds very nice, a uh, nice story. I said there was actual inverted commas evidence. Now, this is nothing we ever started in court or anything, but the three brothers um, became great healers, uh, known as the physicians of Madhavai, and their sons and their sons, and the same for several generations. Now, unlike um, a lot of Celtic law that was lost, the uh, key was uh, are actually preserved and were written down. Now... Depending on your point of view, they could be ancient fey wisdom or gathered from the cent- over the centuries. But uh, I have a few of the cues here, and I'll uh, read them out for you now. Uh, for example, to thick. Now, before I give you these cues, bear in mind I, I'll do the disclaimer bit. These are for reference purposes only. I'm not a medical practitioner of any stretch of the imagination. And if you do just take take these cues, then on on your own head be it, because I can't take liability for them. So what I'm going to read out now are for reference purposes only. So, Tuthik treatment, and I quote, For Tuthik, take the inner back back of ivory and the leaves of the honeysuckle, bruising them well together in a mortar, ex- expressing them through a linen cloth into both nostrils. The patient lying on his back and will relieve him. Okay. Um, to induce sleep, take poppy heads br- bruised with wine, to induce a man to sleep soundly. Now, poppy leaves are an opium, which obviously is the wrong reading of heroin, so I could see how that one would work, but I'm obviously not going to try it. Uh, another one, warts to remove. Whoever, and I quote, whoever has removed warts, let him apply daisy bruised in dog's urine. There too, they will disappear. Hmm, come here, Fido, got a job for you. <laughs> right, a burn or scald. For burn or scald, put the leaves of the lily in boiling milk and apply them to the part until it is well. Constipation, remedy for, and I quote, For constipation, boil root of small thistle growing in woods and give them water to the patient to drink. Fatness to reduce. 
Hmm. Try this one. <laughs> Whoever is over fat, let him drink the juice of fennel and it will reduce him. Okay, that might be a million dollar idea, but uh, I'm not going to try it. Okay, that's the uh, keywords. Now, I have written a book called Whispers from the Celtic Wildwood. Now, it's mainly about the relationship with uh, the ancient Celts and the tree and with trees and woodland and the wildwood and session. But as most of these keywords are remedy based, I've actually listed a, a about three dozen of them in the back of the book as well and uh, you can find them from my website or it's on Amazon as well. Now you may think um, to take fey into account. Now you think of um, the fairies, uh, the Lady of the Lake, she was fey. Now the thing with fairy, most people think of Tinkerbell, uh, sort of Disney, sort of small little imp-like creature that um, is uh, with little wings and what have you. So how could a fae breed with a full-grown adult male to produce three sons? Well, the word fairy has been changed over the centuries. Uh, the Victorians were very much into fairy, and they were um, they sort of created the proto Tinkerbell type character with the um, uh, Conan Doyle, for example. He was hoaxed by the um, Fairy, fairy pictures uh, by two little girls that took photos of the fairies at the bottom of the garden uh, and it wasn't revealed for centuries. Now, the word fairy, you think of them, they are coming very wide range of types. Now, you have the small, like Tinkerbell types and you have other humanoid type ones like a, a, a puka or a puka is a Scottish or Welsh type house elf along the lines of Dobby from... Um, Harry Potter things, but you also had humanoid ones as well as the Lady of the Lake herself was. Now these were a tribe known as the Tulhateg, and Tolkien was inspired by these stories of these ancient fae fa folk to create the elves in Lord of the Rings. Now if you picture, if you've seen the films, wherever you'll get a general idea of what they are. But um, the Lady of the Lake and her husband and the suspicions of Mother Vaya are far from the only ones. Now, if your surname is Pelling, for example, and uh, or it's in your family history, then there's a story from a group of uh, fairies, the Tulachtig type, were dancing, and a young man saw them. So the following night he returned to the woodlands where he saw them, and he ran out and he captured a maiden and took her back to... His home to be his maid, and the others ran off. And uh, since he had her, he could not; she could not escape. And um, a couple of nights later, he went back again, and he heard a few of the fae talking and saying, "Oh, they have captured our sister Penelope." Now, in Celtic law, um, if their name is a very important thing, it defines you. It, it's it's like somebody stealing your ID today. You have power over them. Um, so the name, I'll, I'll cover that in more detail in later episodes, but he went back and he said to the fairy maiden, no, your name is Penelope, therefore he had power over her. But over time they fell in love and um, due to a fairy fae like the Lady of the Lake, she was able to whisper to horses and <clears throat> he became a horse breeder and became quite successful. Then one day um, he was in the paddock with a uh, rather... Br br um, very stallion full of uh, beans and untrainable and he lost his uh, patience and he threw the iron bridle which hit the f uh, which hit Penelope and she then returned to the fae now iron to fae is very dangerous and uh, they can't touch it now there's very several stories along these lines and I will cover into reasons why in later episodes with uh, these stories so if your name is Pelling or you have it in your family history, congratulations, you are part fae. Um, I'll probably cover more uh, in later episodes on this and um, hopefully in episode 5 I will do a series on Celtic romance and love. So thanks again for listening. If you subscribe to the site or like the Facebook page, thanks very much. Uh, if not, you're more than welcome to join. If you wish to message me directly, uh, you can find me at the website in the link. And thanks again for listening. I'll see you again in episode 5.